And now let's meet Jen DeLima, who currently works in Alice Springs. Hi, Steve. Do you come through? She initially left Sydney to work in a remote community in Central Australia. Kintor is 540 kilometres due west of Alice Springs. It's a Rama 7 area. We had to catch a charter plane out there, a little four-seater plane. And when we first went out to have a look at the community, um, Alice Springs or Central Australia had, had a big wet. So Kintor had not had any communication with Alice Springs for two plus weeks, which meant there was no food that had gone into the community, no money, uh, no provisions. So we were the first plane that had arrived in there. Um, and with us came the money tin for the people to be paid, to be able to go to the shop, to buy food. There was a lot of people, the whole community there, speaking a different language. I had landed in another country. And I was scared. My first impression of that place was I was terrified and I wanted to get back on that plane and back to Sydney. Quick. But the plane had left. And we were stranded for at least another 36, 48 hours before the plane would come back. I'm thankful, very, very thankful, because we then met the community. Our son had time to just play and enjoy himself while we were talking to the elders. And at the end of that 36 hours, all three of us knew that we were coming back. The community were very, very welcoming. They couldn't facilitate more than, than they did socially, work-wise. Um, some of the women there took on to be my mentor. Without them, I'd be lost. Because so many times I'd start off in the wrong direction and it would be, no, this is how we do this. This is how we'll do this. And they were, they were my great advisors and they, and they may not have had medical training, but they made life easy. My greatest fear was, would my emergency skills stand me in good stead? Could I actually manage without all the props of an emergency department, all the facilities, the amenities, the other staff? Um, could I do it? Would I ever be able to go to a proper third world environment and survive and be useful? I've always been a city person, so a general practitioner was the general practitioner in the city who did the start of things, never got their fingers dirty, never got to do things. And so that could never be me. But going out to the community, the um, generalist medical practitioner does everything. You've got the emergency medicine stuff, which you know sets your adrenaline on fire. But then you've also got that patient, their background, their home. You, can, you have the potential to do a door-to-door -door service. You know, you're involved in the transport. You're involved in their social situation. You're involved in their financial situation. You're involved in every aspect of that person. Because you've got Rotary tonight. I'm going to Rotary. Mm -hmm. um, Paul was studying school with School of the Year, but that requires an adult to be a tutor with the child and take them through, especially through primary school. And that was Peter's primary role. So he was Paul's tutor. And Paul had not been doing that well in Sydney with his studies. Um... And this child just blossomed. Within, within three months, he had blossomed. He was learning with such uh, enthusiasm and the two of them just were working so well together. I think it's a great opportunity for children and it takes them outside of their, um, their comfort zones as it does for, for most people that take on a new position or whatever. Um, 
So, you know, Paul was readily accepted into a group of young Aboriginal boys and girls and they just disappear for hours and, and quite often we wouldn't see them from sunrise to sunset and when we quizzed them as what they did all day, they were just roaming around the bush and the sand hills and, um, you know, eating native foods and berries and even to the point of, you know, catching birds and having them for lunch. Yeah, weren't they really well? It had a very positive um, effect on him and also um, I think now that he's 16 uh, we're seeing a high level of independence in him um, and self-resourcefulness um, and I th I'd put that down to you know those sort of experiences. I think we realised that we were going to be never returning to Sydney as our home probably within that first year of being out at Kinto. For our family, it was where we needed to be, the space we needed to be, the lifestyle that we wanted. Um, for Paul, I couldn't better his schooling. And that, I suppose for me, that was number one. I could not better his schooling. Um, career-wise, for me, it was... Career-wise, it was where I could... There was The world was my oyster. Um... The permutations, the combinations of practice were just, and have been, just enormous. Eventually, Jen settled with her family in Alice Springs. So is that an early morning meeting or is it early later in the day? Nine, the whole day. So that's the whole day. Now I've actually slowed down and so I'm doing drug and alcohol medicine, so addiction medicine and sexual assault medicine um, and between those two clinical roles I'm involved with education of medical students and GP registrars some of them as remote GP registrars so they're out on the remote communities in Rama 7 areas and I regularly teleconference in with them Hello Peter, how are you? How's your week been? As their support person, their mentor and also as helper with their training. Okay, so Peter, I'll fax that through to you. I'll mark it up. In the big picture, the finances are not at that level of what the city person would earn. And, and I guess you do... I know that, okay, I would be earning differently if I was in that city environment, but... Um, the balance on that is the lifestyle that I'm enjoying. Um, the balance is the career challenge. Alice Springs offers everything. I'm definitely not impressed by traffic and you know, the humdrum push of cities. I'd much rather live in a small community and, and have an identity as well. You know, where you, where you go into a shop and someone remembers your face. The ability to use your time, every moment of your time, is valuable time. Every activity you're involved with can be a quality activity rather than sitting in the car for two and a half hours driving. I have a bicycle as well. I'm getting myself coordinated <laughs> in cycling and, you know, it's lovely to be able to cycle to work and there's no smog. And as I'm, you know, not a hugely confident person in these sporting arenas, um, for me to be able to do that is a huge step outside the box. Hi, Steve. How have you been? Oh, good, thank you. Good. For someone who really wants to practice medicine in its purest form, that is, be a health healer stroke carer, this is the environment that allows you to do it, to look after your patient as a whole person that links with their community. Sleeping well? Yes. I you can't do it in any other environment, I don't think. This is where people are in need, and I can make just a tiny difference, bring that humanity, bring my skills, bring whatever little I have to offer. You get that and, you know, the city has lots 
of doctors, lots of services, lots of everything in comparison. And this is where you've got that match between what you went into university to study, to do, and you can do it. <laughs>